All right, appraisers, this is Brandon Rich. We're really excited to have all of you here. It actually looks like we've still got a lot of people joining as I speak, um, and this is already the biggest crowd we've ever had, so thank you all for taking the time to join us here today. We think we have some great info to share, and I think you're going to get a lot out of it, both on the market analysis side of things and the business side. So let's go ahead and just jump right into the introductions here. As I already said, my name is Brandon Rich. I have been appraising in the Phoenix market for a little bit over 13 years. Um, I am still an active appraiser. I also do some consulting work, both for appraisers and larger firms. And uh, several years ago, I actually created a spreadsheet just for myself, just for my own appraisal business. And I gave it to some friends and it turns out they liked it and told me I should start try and sell it and so I did and that just turned into a great thing because it allowed me I got this opportunity to talk to appraisers on a basically a daily basis um, helping them with their market analysis hearing their perspectives on things and that kind of caused uh, me to go ahead and and talk to Kyle who I'm going to introduce here in a minute and and we decided to co-create spark together um, which is our, our tool for market analysis and data importing and all that so I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Kyle now and let him do his intro Okay, so my name is Kyle Rich, and before I got into the appraisal industry, I spent the majority of my working life in retail management and business leadership at the executive level. The majority of that time was spent in operations where I would analyze data and make decisions based on those analyses. Whether it be on profits or sales or inventory or payroll or whatever, I found myself frustrated at the lack of good tools available. So being a do-it-yourselfer, I decided to start making my own first in the form of simple spreadsheets, <laughs> then more complicated spreadsheets, and then finally, full-blown web development, web applications. And although that skill grew out of necessity, I found that I was passionate about this idea of taking a mess of numbers and figures and presenting them in a beautiful, organized way to the users, which allows them to make quick, important business decisions, way faster and better decisions than if they did it the old way. As you probably guessed by our last names, Brandon and I are related, we're brothers, and one night at a family gathering, I was telling him about my newfound passion and skill for this, this web development and data analysis. And he kind of told me how my journey parallels a lot of appraisers' experiences. And that got us talking about how we could possibly marry my skill and passion with Brandon's expertise and passion to possibly serve appraisers. And that's how Spark was born. And also how I got into the industry, which was about four years ago. I'm not an appraiser like Brandon is, and I definitely don't pretend to understand nearly as deeply as you guys do, but I am passionate about helping you. So that's me, and in a minute here, Brandon's gonna take over. And while he's going over the presentation that we have prepared for you, we know that a lot of you will have questions, and we definitely encourage that. So feel free to ask away using the question box in your webinar software. I'll answer the ones that I can directly in that chat box, but we're gonna save the rest until the end so that we can keep this presentation timely for you. Brandon? Awesome, thanks a lot, Kyle. Uh, okay, first, before we get into this, I want to apologize. I, I developed this cough last night, and I'm going to do my best not to cough right into the microphone at you guys. Um, so first, what we're going to do now is get into, I always like to cover what we are going to learn. So we're going to show you how to analyze your market to clearly identify changes in the direction of your market, which is especially pertinent now, as it seems like this is where a lot of markets are heading at this point. Next, we're gonna show you how you can quickly but accurately analyze your market and then how you can also replace the 1004MC with other data. Then we're gonna dive into a deeper analysis of sale price and show how you can improve the quality of your reports and also create a really solid work file with that data. At the same time, as you can see on the last bullet point there, we're also gonna show you how you can use different charts for different scenarios and also how to better explain what the charts and graphs mean. And then last, once we're done with that, we're gonna show you how you can leverage all of that and technology to make your report stand out and then use that to get more and better work. Okay, so let's just dive into it. What I'm gonna do is, I'm going to get into each of these topics and give you some tips on each one. And once we're done with that, we'll get into how this can help your appraisal business. And by the way, at the end, we're also gonna show you how we can help you with this if you're interested. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. I am going to uh, switch over to uh, the live demo here. And so here, obviously what you're looking at here, you've got the 1004 MC. And what we're gonna cover is that first bullet point, which is essentially how you can better analyze your market data to clearly identify changes in the direction of your market. 
So you can use changes in certain features of your market to identify upcoming changes in the entire direction of the market. And what I mean with that by that would be one feature or two features uh, in this 1004 MC, for example. So like, let's say housing supply, you can use, if there's a significant change in that, even though home prices are stable, that's a strong indicator to you that your market it could be in for a big swing. Other things you could use would be short sales or REOs. If you see short sales and REOs increasing, uh, and you can see in this case, the data shows I got 0% REOs and short sales, but, but I have talked to appraisers in certain markets where those are actually starting to come up right now. So that's something to be on the lookout for. And uh, this data right here that you're looking at, and by the way, all the data I'm gonna show you is real data from real appraisers that they have sent me at some point. So this data that we're looking at is from an appraiser in the Dallas area. He sent this to me and um, he really his, his reason for sending it to me was just to show how he was kind of scared about what his market was doing. And so as you can see, he was considering most of the things stable and obviously disregard the, the 1004 MC numbers a lot of times, and you'll probably hear me say it more than once, these don't actually accurately identify what your market is doing. Um, but in this case, you can see the MC, you've got the sale price is 915, 1.14 and 1.156 million. It looks like it's either stable or increasing, right? Um, but then you've got, look what the housing supply and number of active listings is doing. And so, it's a significant increase. And you can see here, this is just, I'm doing this in Spark. It's the tool I'm gonna to be using for the demo because it's what we made. But um, you can see Spark is showing that the actual increase based on all the data, not just these three points in here, is that it's increasing between 28% a month and 415% a month, the, the number of active listings. That's, that's huge, that's gigantic. And so we can dive in here and look at that and see what the increase actually looks like. So. This chart right here, for example, is 12 months of data and it's for the number of active listings. And so what we've done is actually, this is 365 dots, one for every day in the year. And the market you can see was pretty stable when it comes to active listings, right until right around here and things just started to skyrocket. And then if I go back and I look at, and also by the way, you can see this two year analysis, it's the same, it's pretty dead stable right until you get around right here at the month eight, eight uh, I'm sorry, six or eight months back. And then what I also wanted to show you was housing supply, kind of the same situation there. If I click on housing supply, I can see a dramatic increase, uh, both looking at it over one year and looking at it over two years here. It's just like right here, it just starts skyrocketing. And so this is telling me, and it's, it's what led that appraiser to contact me, is that he's feeling really nervous about what's about to happen in his market. So these are just things to be aware of as you're going through and performing your market analysis. Now, one little tip here that I'd say, and I'm sure a lot of you already know it, but just to mention it, um, all the check boxes on the left that you see here are all items uh, that are positive for your market. All the check boxes on the right, when you're looking at the MC, are items that are negative for your market. So you can see here, looks pretty neutral. We got the couple that are that are negative, but these are big negatives, so it's what you wanna be aware of. But um, another thing to look out for is if, let's just say, I'm just gonna randomly switch some of these. Let's just say most of your appraisals, when you're doing the 1004 MC, it kinda looks like this. You've got a few over on the left, several in the stable category. If you see things starting to switch where it's looking more like this, where you've got things starting to move to the middle and then over to the right, that's a good sign to you that things are softening and you need to be aware of that. And you can also use those kind of things to um, let your client know and kind of uh, help you, we'll get into it later, but help you stand out like, hey, I, I was, he, he, this appraiser let me know what was going on. So yes, st prices were stable, but they let me know that something might be coming up. And that's also important when it comes to exposure time, because a lot of times we just, by out of rote or in our templates, we just say that exposure time was the same as marketing time. But when you get into situations like this, you're actually gonna see things where your exposure time becomes different than your marketing time. So be aware of that and note it in your reports. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna cover is quickly and accurately analyzing your market. Oh, Brent, hang on, actually, it looks like we have a question. Brent, if you don't mind me interrupting real quick, I just wanna remind everybody, I see a lot of people jumping in um, after we've already started. I just wanna remind you that there will be a recording of this going out. So if you've missed anything, you'll get that after the webinar. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks, Kyle. 
Uh, okay, so the second bullet point here, how to quickly analyze your market um, and uh, quickly and accurately analyze your market and also replace the 1004MC. So first, as you saw when I hover over these, uh, we would encourage you to find a tool that not only is gonna help you uh, provide professional looking, credible looking reports, uh, but all and, and help you with the actual market analysis, but also save you some time. So if you can find a tool that lets you perform your analysis, however you wanna perform it, but also do it accurately and quickly, um, that's a huge thing. And then a side note also, if, if, that, if you can find a tool that also lets you get professional looking charts into your report, because as we're gonna get into later, that is what a lot of, uh, especially uh, lender and non-lender clients are looking for. So what I just wanted to show you here is, um, as I hover over these checkboxes, you can see that Spark, in this case, the tool that I'm using right here, is showing me the analyses that I wanted to perform. And actually, I'm gonna switch over to a different set of data now. Uh, this was the that appraiser in Dallas. I'm gonna switch over to some data from Phoenix, and this is where I am. And so in this case, this is how, this is set up to analyze how I like to analyze data. So when I hover over the, uh, median comparable sale price checkboxes, increasing, stable, or declining, you can see that um, Spark is showing me the, exactly the analyses that I wanted to perform. You can you can see that they're different than, than the analyses that were on that other screen for the Dallas appraiser, because this is all something you set up and customize, so it, you're actually analyzing your market the way you should. And this is what's gonna set you apart from your peers as well, which we'll get into, especially on the third set of data that we'll, that we'll jump into here. Um, but the point here being that as you scroll through your checkboxes, you can quickly but very accurately see what's going on in your market and then mark things appropriately. And then what we also wanted to cover in this bullet point is replacing the 1004MC. So obviously we all know that a few months ago, Fannie Mae announced that, uh, and Freddie actually shortly after, announced that they're no longer requiring the 1004MC. And I know that a lot of lenders, a lot of lenders have followed suit there. So, um, uh, we wanted to show you like ways that you can analyze your market and provide that data to your clients in your report without having to rely on the 1004MC. Because as I said before, these numbers in here can often be very misleading. Um, I know we all, none of us really like the 1004MC, but I know some of you are still using it because you feel like at least it gets you the analysis and it's something that you're uh, your client already understands. So you can just mark the boxes and, and feel like you gave them what they need. And so, I just want to show you what we did here, and um, and and basically what it is is when we built this market analysis, what we looked at, and really the heart of the market analysis is all of the analyses that are going on behind the scenes, and that's what you're seeing here when I hover over these check boxes. Really, this is just an overlay. It's just the 1004 MC overlay because appraisers were required to do it. Um, so all we did really is we removed this overlay and put a new one on, and that's what I'm going to show you here. So this is what we call the trend dashboard. And essentially, it's all the same analyses. Again, like I said, it's the same meat of the analysis. It's all here, um, but we display it in a way where it's just showing the relevant information. And so you have full control over this. You can decide what's gonna go where. If you decide you don't want price ratio in there, you just remove it. And so your client will only get what you actually want them to get, but you're also gonna give them a full and detailed analysis so they can see, okay, the appraiser analyzed their competing data, over 12 months and they used price per square foot or they analyzed their neighborhood data, et cetera. And so the point is um, having full control over the analysis, that analysis and putting into your report what you your client really wants to see and what they need to verify that you, know, you have support for your opinions and conclusions in your report. All right, uh, let's see, I'm gonna follow along here, make sure I covered everything. Uh, I just wanted to note that keep, keep in mind that just because you have clients that no longer want the 1004MC, it doesn't mean you can now stop analyzing your market. I have talked to appraisers that thought that. Uh, in fact, now I would say it's even more important to find a tool that you can really rely on that lets you analyze your market in the way you want. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to touch on here before I get into the last set of data is the um, this market indicator. So as I showed you in the 1004MC, how you can use the checkboxes on the left showing that it's a positive market, the checkboxes on the right showing it's a negative market, that we also built something like that into the trend dashboard and that's this market indicator. So basically all it did is it's telling me I made three positive market choices, 
one negative and five neutral. And overall, this is where it's sitting. And so as you're going in and doing reports, you can see as this as this indicator moves one direction or the other, that's that can be telling you where your market's about to be headed. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and dive into the third set of data. And this is also the third bullet point, which was how you can uh, significantly improve the quality of your report, or at least the perceived quality of your reports and the analyses that you're using, and also create a, a, a really solid work file. So I'm gonna now switch over to the third set of data that we're gonna be looking at. And by the way, I said something about significantly improving the quality of your reports, and I realize that some of you may feel like your reports are really solid, really good quality, but and it's very possible they are. But something to keep in mind is what does the reader want to see? What does your client, the lender, the bank, the, the lawyer, whoever, what do they want to see in the report? And so as we go through this, we'll hopefully show you some of that, and you can, and, and you can get an idea of how it is possible that you could at least improve the perceived quality of your report from your the reader of it. Okay, so this set of data that we're looking at here, this is from an appraiser in Southern California. He was doing an appraisal on a condo in Beverly Hills. And he uses Spark and he called me up one day and he he said, listen, Brandon, I, I can see what Spark is doing. It's telling me the market is declining at 3.3% a month or 2.3% a month. And obviously you can see the numbers here, the at least the uh, 1004 MC numbers. And it, he's like, I know for sure this market is not declining. So help me out. So we dove into the data. And so that's what I'm gonna do right now, just to kind of give you an idea. So I'm gonna click on where it says median comparable sale price to kind of dive into it. So. I'm gonna first get this so it's looking like what that appraiser was looking at. So I'm just going to add an analysis because what that appraiser did was he was using multiple sets of data because there's so few data points here. He, for his competing data, he loaded in a larger set of data, which at least in Spark, we call that the neighborhood file. It's all the data, uh, if you were to go to the geographic boundaries as you define them on page one of your report um, and just get all the single family homes, or in this case, all the condos and load those in without any other parameters. That would be the neighborhood file. So he loaded that in and that's what I'm gonna do right here. And he was using, he actually used median price and price per square foot. So I will do both. And so you can see whether I'm looking at the competing data or the neighborhood data, it's dropping, like things are looking like it's dropping and that's not a small amount, 4% a month on million to $2 million homes is, is a big deal. And then he did the same thing with price per square foot. So I'm just gonna add that analysis in here and we'll switch it over to price per square foot. And so now you can see, re regardless of how he looks at it, medium price or medium price per square foot, things are dropping um, anywhere from about 25% to almost 40% a year actually. So then we got into it and, and we talked and I was like, okay, well, what does it look like over the past two years? And so we, uh, you can just click, I'm just gonna click clone widget right there and it makes an exact copy. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change that to instead of analyzing 12 months worth of data, let's just go to 24 months. And then I know that he was looking at it in uh, a quarterly bar chart and he felt that like that was the best way and he was reading me off these numbers so as i hover over these you can see the actual data and how many data points are in each one and he's reading me off the numbers and from what he was telling me i'm like yeah listen it, it's it sounds like the market was increasing and now it's just declining at least over the past nine months and you can see these numbers show an increase that's because it's considering the whole two years but looking at just the most recent year it's it's pretty much just a, a really big drop and so let me just show you one thing here which kind of confirms what I was showing him and he was uh, or at least I was wanting to use these trend lines here uh, so this is what I was thinking his market was doing and that is things were going up things were going up and then right around here it started to stabilize and then drop and then it just started to drop big time and so he's telling me yeah I get what you're saying Brandon but my gut is telling me that's not what's happening in my market I I know it really well I I mean I know the guy he's a he's a great appraiser um, and so I I just went along with him and I was like okay even though it looks to me like the data is clearly showing that your market is currently just now in a decline. Let's go ahead and dive in deeper. So we did other things. We went and pulled up the individual data in one of these bars like this one, and we checked it out and saw, we went and looked just to see if maybe there's a trend in people buying bigger homes or smaller homes. Maybe people are buying older homes or newer homes. And since there's not a lot of data in each of these, maybe that's throwing it off. So maybe people were buying um, just, 
much uh, older homes here that were maybe in lower condition and newer homes here that were in better condition maybe. Uh, but that wasn't the case. We looked into all that and that just didn't seem to be the case. So um, he was still telling me and, and trying to convince me that he was right and the market was stable. So we did one more thing. And so I said, I asked him basically if, you ha if he had any other data that we could use that would that would be similar to the the market that he's already analyzing like a bigger set of data um and he actually did and he had already had it ready to go and so i'm going to go ahead and show you that so now i'm going to make another copy of this chart and all i'm going to do is switch to that other data set so i'm going to get rid of neighborhood data and i'm going to switch this to his third set of data which in spark it's called the alternative set of data and so this is what it shows now. And you can see, finally, we, and I know I'm making the, this, I'm going through this much faster than I did with him. It took some time, but uh, we went through and we realized, okay, with this third set of data, because it has more data points, we can actually see that the market is stable. And in here, what ended up happening, if I remember right, is it was quality. These homes right here just happened to be uh, lower quality than these homes. And in fact, most of the homes over the past couple years were were overall fairly similar in quality, but here and here, we just had some that were slightly higher and that made the numbers look like it was just dropping off when actually it wasn't. So I would just say that as long as you have data that you think is, it, it conforms with what your other data sets are doing, then by all means, use that other set of data, that bigger set of data, because it can actually give you uh, really good information and possibly more accurate information because things are normalized by having all the other data points in there. All right, so um, now I'm going to, Oh, one other thing actually that I that I missed is um, profiles. So uh, depending on the software, the tool that you're using, uh, like in Spark, we have profiles. So in this case, the appraiser can go in and say, okay, this is how I want to analyze data when I'm doing an average tract home. Maybe you just want something really basic going on. But then you can also set up another profile. So as soon as you load in your data, you can tell Spark, okay, this is a rural property or this is a complex property and you can go in and analyze data that way. And regardless of whether you're gonna use a tool like Spark or some other tool, that's something you wanna be able to do is, is, is to have quick ways where you can go in and analyze data in, in, in other ways. And so however you can do that with what you're using, I would definitely encourage you to do that. And then um, what I'm gonna do now actually is, is show you what you actually are going to get in a report uh, because this is key to leveraging data to grow and diversify your business so let's go ahead and i'm going to pop into an actual report so i just took some of that data i loaded it into a report now here of course is the 1004mc we're all really familiar with this um, one key thing oh shoot sorry guys i'm gonna i'm gonna back up a step just because i think it's important here is i i forgot to mention that when this appraiser went in and did this, he also made sure to include commentary about this data. Because obviously, if the market's looking to the reviewer like it's declining, you and you're gonna mark stable, then you need to definitely spell that out in your report and provide clarification. So you want, what he did was he went in and marked this box, made sure that that chart is actually gonna go into his report. And then also what he did was he uh, flipped this over and then you can say include comments. So Spark then, you can see the orange uh, sentence up here, but it, it will then create a comment based on that analysis and you can go in and kind of customize it, add in whatever you want it to include in that comment. And you can do that for whatever analyses you perform. And whether you have a tool that automatically does it or you do it yourself, definitely that's something you need to be aware of. If you have data, or if you're, I'm sorry, if you're marking some checkbox that appears different than what the, reader is seeing as far as numbers, then you definitely need to clarify that in your report. That's something they're really looking for right now. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get back into that report. So this was the, this is what reminded me, I saw the comments here. Uh, and so uh, I'm gonna skip these comments and just go to this. So in cases where you aren't gonna be using the 1004MC, uh, as, as I said, definitely include the data that you want the reader to see as far as your analysis in your report. And so in this case, and, and in Spark, and hopefully in whatever tool you're using, you have full control over this. So I can go and tell Spark, I don't want these two numbers to go into the report. I don't need the reader to see those. I just want them to see these ones or whatever it is. And so basically the reader, your client can see, okay, 
he or she analyzed this data over this period of time and they analyze median price or housing supply or whatever's and and they think it's stable or increasing or whatever it happens to be and so this goes into your report it's important it's a really big clarifier and you it allows you to not have to include tons and tons of numbers because for example that uh chart that was neighborhood data over 24 months that was eight different numbers to comprise that increase of 0.5 percent a month if we were to look at that by quarter that's eight numbers so in here we kind of boiled all those eight numbers down to one easy to read number for your client um, and so i would encourage you to do something similar and then obviously keep the data for your work file uh, okay and now actually well before i get into work file let me show you the charts so and this is going to come down to something we also have been hearing from lenders and amcs which is they want the charts i know a lot of appraisers are against charts but this is what they want to see and also they would really like it if the comments could be next to the charts i'm sure most of you whatever form filler software you're using it's going to allow you to do something like this. So when you put in your chart, if at all possible, definitely put in your commentary that's associated with that chart right next to it. It makes it really easy for them. They don't have to flip between a whole bunch of pages trying to figure out what belongs to what. It's just all right here. And so in Spark, for example, you can do that or you can just put in the nice big charts if you want to as well, either way. But this is actually what they're looking for right now, something like this. And then now, I'm going to go ahead and get into the work file. So this is important and we're gonna to touch on uh, advisory opinion 37, which is in USPAP, which is referring to computer assisted valuation tools. Now, obviously Spark isn't gonna help you with your actual value, but it does help with your market analysis and some other things. And so this is something you wanna be aware of uh, because advisory opinion 37 basically states as a, as a broad summary that you need to be aware of how the software works. You don't have to describe it in, in super great detail, but you need to be aware of in general how it works and you need to be, uh, it, it's, it should be a reasonable expectation for you that the software you're using is providing accurate information. So what we provide in each of your reports, if you are using a, if you're using Spark, is this calculations page. And this is basically just breaking down exactly how Spark calculated everything, starting with the 1004MC. It even breaks down and includes information right from the Fannie Mae selling guide. It's all right here. And then as we scroll through, we got um, uh, information on all the rest of the 1004MC uh, data. And then right here, Spark also, I haven't mentioned this at all because it's not really uh, what we've been talking about, but it'll load in your low, high, and predominant price and age. And so it then covers how we calculate predominant and how the appraiser can control what that number is. And, and then here is kind of the important one I wanted to touch on was your calculations on your market and whether things are going up or down or stable. You, you wanna make sure that you're aware of how, whether you're using a spreadsheet or whatever tool of how it's calculating the increase or decrease and make sure it's accurate. So in Spark, we include this page. It breaks down with all the formulas, it has the regression data, um, how we got it, it, the final number of things are going up at 0.6% a month or whatever it happens to be. So just make sure you have that. And then the last thing I wanted to point out when it comes to this market analysis is you actually have um, in your work file all of the data. So in this case, this is the time where I used it without the 1004MC. So it put in this dashboard information into my work file and I can copy and paste this into my report if I ever wanted to. And then it also has all the information regarding my neighborhood data, my numbers it put in the top of page two, all the commentary. And, and importantly here, we have a breakdown of your data sets that you uploaded. So in this case, this was my uh, Phoenix data. So I don't have that alternative file information here, but you can see it has the breakdown of all the data that you used in your analysis. Again, this is just key to supporting yourself later on down the road. And as we'll get into uh, possibly uh, marketing yourself for non-lender work. And then here, as you might have seen, I went. I think Spark loaded maybe four or five charts into the report. Those are the ones that I specifically said, these are the charts I want in my report. But in this case, or in all cases, I should say, Spark is going to actually include every single analysis and every single table of data in your work file for you. So it's all here. And you can see there's probably like 20 or 30 different charts and tables of data in here because that's exactly what I used for my analysis, not necessarily what I wanted the reader of my report to see, but it's all there for me if I needed to uh, defend myself. Uh, okay, so I think 
Um, that might cover everything I wanted to get into on that piece. Before I move on to the next thing, I'm just gonna ask Kyle if there's, okay, looks like we don't have any questions we need to answer right now. If you do have any questions, please go ahead and post them in the box there. And so now, there, Brandon, there are a few questions, but I think we can save these ones till the end. So we'll cover them. For people that did ask questions, we will answer those at the end of the webinar. Perfect, all right, got it, thank you. All right, so now let's go ahead and switch back over here. I'm going to get back into this, and so basically it's it's now what? So how is all of this valuable to your appraisal business? How does this give you any kind of edge? Well, first, for most of us, things have definitely slowed down, and it's easy to start to panic, but remember that when you were busy, it was also easy to say, oh, I don't have time to learn how to use that tool or I don't have time to learn mobile appraising. Uh, so we have to think about changing our mindsets and not think of this as a slowdown, but as an opportunity, a way to kind of improve your business. Also, keep in mind that whether we like it or not, this industry is clearly changing. Whether we're talking about appraisal waivers, hybrid appraisals, more desktop appraisals being done, it is the case that things are changing. And I would say that now more than ever, it is critical to not only improve our skills and our actual reports, but to also work on those critical components of our appraisal business so that we can stand out amongst our peers, diversify our work, and grow our business regardless of these changing times. Okay, so now we can really get into this leveraging data part, and we're going to start with how you can grow your business using lender work. All right, so what I wanna start with is, I am not a marketing expert. However, I have had plenty of conversations with those who are, as well as the powers that be in the appraisal industry. So I have a really good idea of how using data can not only help improve your business, but also grow your business as well. And, and the first thing I just want to hit on just real briefly is just keep in mind, it's no longer the Wild West. You do have to, you must provide credible support for your market analysis and results. Um, not only do you need to, but it's really what your clients just want to see. Uh, and, and next, I'd say that things are uh, now that things are slowing down and most most lenders are tightening their panels and they're only looking to work with what they consider to be the best appraisers. So being able to show how you support your market analysis and adjustments easily helps you to stand out from the rest and helps you get placed on those higher tier panels. It helps you to also get higher fees and more importantly, continue to receive work even during those slower times. Now, I've also been, as I mentioned at the beginning, going over uh, who I am, I, I talk to appraisers daily from all over the country. And, and uh, with many things slowing down, appraisers are applying en masse to as many AMCs and lender pa panels as possible in the hopes of just getting more work. However, from what it looks like to me, nobody is really doing much to stand out when they apply. And I've actually had uh, conversations with with people, higher up people at, at lenders and AMCs who say they they want that, like they want you to do something different to stand out. So just one example is add in a cover letter or something to your application that clearly states why you're different and including how you support your market analysis and results. This is going to go a long way towards putting you at the top of their pile. And it, it's another thing that they just this is really something they're looking at now as far as looking to see that you are providing the support in your report for what you're saying. You might be an amazing appraiser uh, doing everything right in the appraisal process, all that standard one stuff. But if you're not providing your client with what they want to see, or at least giving the appearance that you're doing your job there, then it's going to be frustrating for them. Uh, and we'll get into a little bit more of that later here. So next is, Find out who the influencers are at the lenders you're interested in working with and start building a relationship with them. You can even send them a personal message or an email with your resume, a cover letter, and what makes you stand out and why they should consider adding you to their panel or even their preferred panel. And you know what, I wanna stop for a second and just uh, mention that I'm covering a bunch of stuff here, both on this, uh, on lender work and the next one, which is non-lender work. And so, if, if there's something you miss, don't worry about it. We're going to be sending out a recording of this, as we said later on, you're gonna get that, this later today or tomorrow. Um, so you don't have to worry about memorizing all this or jotting it all down as I'm going. Uh, okay, next, LinkedIn. 
Once again, who are the influencers at the lenders you want to connect with? Reach out, connect with them on LinkedIn, and then build that on that relationship. In your follow-up messaging, you can share what sets you apart, including how you support your analysis and final results. Uh, the next thing is website. How you support and analyze your market data, add that to some section on your website and place it in a really prominent place. Uh, you can just call it the why we're different section. And for anyone who's bold enough and comfortable going on camera, make a welcome video for your site and state what makes you different in that video and just put it right up at the top of your, at the top of your site. And you might be wondering right now, why is he talking about websites when we're covering lender work? Do they actually look at this kind of stuff? And yes, they actually will check you out online during your and and look at your social profiles, your website and your website if you have one. So having that clear message on your site about how you analyze data to provide true results or at least support for your results is a message that will really resonate with them. Then when you apply, you can also put that in your application. Just note what your website is so they can go and check it out. One other thing to consider is that I've spoken with a couple large AMCs and lenders who are using their own internal market analysis or they're, they're considering using Spark as a part of their review analysis. So if the appraiser isn't supporting their results, the reviewer goes in and runs their own analysis. But if they know you're already using Spark or some similar type tool and, prov and you're documenting that, uh, that support in your report, then that saves the reviewer that extra step in the review process and it makes you look great. And then last on this uh, on lender work is make sure you contact your existing clients, share details about your work and what sets you apart and let them know how you're improving or changing your reports to provide better analyses and also to support your value conclusions. Uh, you could also let them know that you've used this this particular slowdown as an opportunity to improve your skills and your reports as, and how that benefits them. Also, ask them what else you can do to stand out and either get on their preferred list or increase your chances of getting more work. Okay, so I think I've covered what I wanted to there. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over and now we're gonna get into non-lender work. All right, so, and I know this is a big one for a lot of you. So the first, the main point here and it's a big one is you can use your superior market and market analysis and data analysis as your primary branding strategy in all of your marketing. So what's your USP, your unique selling proposition? And that is your superior data analysis. And you can also use that to separate yourself from the competition. When marketing to attorneys, for example, you can alert them as to how this sets you apart from your competition and then use that in your messaging and state that you that should the need arise to appear in court, you provide rock solid defensible reports because of your superior systems and data analysis. Then you can do the same thing in marketing to financial planners, estate attorneys, paralegals and so on. And then next is content marketing. Share Facebook posts about how you perform market analyses. Uh, Facebook posts or blog posts about updates or changes in your market area. People love market updates and stats regarding what's happening with inventory and home values. And then you can also run Facebook ads with that same content. Speaking, uh, this is another one. This is a, uh, this, as far as market analysis, data analysis, this is a great topic for speaking at a networking event or real estate office or legal function. Uh, discuss how you analyze your market and come to a value conclusion to eliminate the guesswork out of the equation. Uh, and then social media, again, LinkedIn, connecting with your target audience and using that in your messaging. You should also remember to update your LinkedIn profile so that it clearly addresses how you help solve, solve your target audience's problems by providing superior market and data analysis. Once again, part of your overall branding strategy. And again, I just wanna say that again, because I have seen uh, a lot of appraisers who have not updated their LinkedIn profile. So if you have one, I would highly encourage you to go check it out today and, and update that. And then as you develop a marketing strategy, update it again at that point. And if you're not on LinkedIn, go at, do it. Jump in and join in. It's going to be helpful for your business. Okay, now, next is video marketing. Again, a, person, a personal welcome message on your website or a marketing video for your business. Also, uh, it's really beneficial if you provide video content updates for marketing to your target, to your target audience. And then next is website, um, and we already spoke about this in regard to lender work, but once again, use your superior data and market analysis as your branding strategy to help set you apart and make sure that you have that message clearly displayed on your website and other social profiles. 
Uh, and then realtors, of course, uh, pre-listing appraisals, post-listing appraisals, those are a big one. Show them how your superior data analysis and market analysis will help them provide more accurate list prices or even convince owners that their home has been listed too high. I actually just had an appraiser, actually it wasn't an appraiser, sorry, I was uh, at an appraisal conference. I was just on a little break and I got a call, I thought it was an appraiser, and it was actually a realtor calling me about Spark to see if he could use it um, to help him do the, just this, explain to homeowners why what they want to sell their homes for is just, that's just too high. Uh, so anyways, that's something to be aware of. Uh, and then next is, you need to get your marketing message across that appraisers are not all the same and why or how your superior data and market analysis skills set you apart so that people will consider using you instead of your competition. And then on that note, it's important to not just say what you'll say what you'll do, but to actually show them because anybody can say any of these things, right? So, but you can do these things now. And, and so just create a video, video showing your screen maybe, and, or you can just walk them through it in a, in a webinar like this, how, how you use your software to analyze the market and then what you'll include in the report. Okay. So I think that covers what we wanted to cover in this section. What I'm going to do now is move on to uh, well, first, we're going to do a recap regarding what we what we learned. So first, we showed you how you can analyze your market to clearly identify changes in the direction of your market. Then we showed you how you can use your software tools like Spark to quickly but also accurately analyze your market in the way that you deem best. And then also what you can do to replace the 1004MC. And one thing I just want to say there is that a lot of appraisers, they think that because something is fast, it can't be accurate. Um, because obviously, if if you only have a couple hours to do an appraisal report, you're not going to get an accurate conclusion. But when it comes to tools like this, as you saw, you can get accurate results, but also get them quickly. Uh, and then we also showed how you can improve the quality of your reports, or at least the perceived quality of your reports, and create a thorough work file for the analysis. We also showed how and why, as you can see in the last bullet point, uh, it's important to create charts and that you, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, why it's important to create charts that you think best portray your market and provide what your clients are looking for. And last, as we just finished explaining, you can use how you can use this to leverage the information and current technology to make your reports stand out and then use that to grow and diversify your business. Okay, so as we told you at the beginning of this, uh, we can help you with this market analysis stuff, and that is through Spark, obviously. Everything we showed you in the market analysis section was using Spark, so hopefully you saw the value there. But I'm just going to quickly point out a few things, some of which we didn't cover. And hang on one second. It looks like we might have a question. I just wanted to mention again, as we get more questions, that we will be addressing them all in just a little bit as we finish up. Thanks. All right, perfect. Thanks, Kyle. Um, so first, you do get a free trial with Spark, so you can use it at no cost on your first 12 reports. Um, after that, it is $49 a month, and that does include some things we haven't talked about yet, but I'll, but I'll get into it. Um, and uh, on top of that, if, if you're an appraiser that just, maybe you're semi-retired, you're not doing that many reports each month, or maybe because of the slowdown. So you, uh, we also have other options where you can just pay per report, and it's right around $3 a report. Okay, and as you saw, it has, in the previous demo, it has a robust but easy to use market analysis. And uh, many appraisers tell us that we do have the best customer service in the industry based on both our phone and email support and also the tutorials and help videos that are built right into Spark. We actually have a whole YouTube channel with boatloads of videos to help appraisers out if they, uh, if they don't happen to wanna call in or email for some reason. Okay. And Spark actually does a lot more than what we covered today, as I mentioned. In fact, you saw one third of what Spark does. The other two sides of Spark being that it will import your subject and comp data from both MLS and public records. And it also has a cost data and site extraction tool. And just to quickly touch on the importing subject and comp data using MLS and public records, that is fully customizable. So you can load in the data however you want to load it in. Um, however you like your grid to look, you have full control over that. And then regarding the cost data, um, essentially we purchase a subscription to the cost data through dwelling cost for all of our customers. And this means that Spark will also be able to fill out your cost approach and even quickly run the cost approach on your comps. So you can use the site extraction method to help with site value in times when you don't have vacant land sales to help you out. Okay, and as you saw, there are 
infinitely customizable charts and, and, and commentary based on your own analyses. I didn't even get into how you can customize the color of the charts, um, but you can do all of that. Plus, considering what you get and what else is out there, we are confident that we do have the best pricing in the industry. Uh, last, I just want to point out that we also have a private Facebook group for all of our customers where you can go in and ask questions and get answers both from us and your peers. But also, we have started adding recently and we are planning on doing it going forward, other information to help you in your job, um, whether it's growing your appraisal business or just being better at market analysis or knowing better how to use the site extraction tool. Uh, for example, a couple of days ago, we posted um, the video from that the appraisal standards board just released regarding hybrid appraisals and whether they're USPAP compliant. Uh, we also post information on classes we're gonna have. So we do classes every couple months on uh, full hour long classes just on one specific topic like site extraction and how to use it and, and you know things to avoid and things to look out for, that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm just going to jump in and show you real quick, if you're interested, how you can get the free trial and then we'll get into some other things. So first, if you are interested, you can go and check it out at sparkforappraisers.com slash trial. So just keep that uh, link in mind. And now what I'm gonna do is go into this. So this is that page that you're gonna get to. And for everybody who's um, looking at the chat, I also posted the link there so you can just click on that. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so here's where you get to. You can click the get started button. This just takes you, walks you through the process of getting started with Spark. And if you're and if you're not sure if you want to even get into the free trial yet, of course, check out the information. There's a lot of data in here. We've got reviews, training information, all that's right here. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to check it out. And now let's go ahead and get back into this. And all right, and now what we're gonna get into is, uh, we, we actually have countless testimonials from appraisers and we just wanted to show you a few. Many of these here are that you see on the screen right now are related to our customer service and support and what exactly appraisers have to say about that. And then, uh, I'll look at that for a second. I'm obviously not gonna read through all these, um, but I wanna scroll through and show you the next one here. So the next two are about Spark itself and what appraisers have to say about it. This uh, is all, by the way, unsolicited feedback. It's just things appraisers have mentioned to us. So I'll give you a second to look at some of those. Okay, sorry about that. And then, uh, uh, and then this slide right here, just further going into it. In fact, um, there was one I think I wanted to touch on in here. Um, anyways, I'm not gonna read them, but I'll just let you take a look at it. And then last, here are a few testimonials from appraisers showing why we have so many appraisers switching over to Spark. I'll give you a second to look at that. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and skip past that. And yeah, so that's it. Whether you're currently using another tool or you're not using any kind of tool like this at all, I'd encourage you to take advantage of the free trial and try it out to see if it's going to work well for you and your business. You got nothing to lose by trying it out. And now what we're gonna do is go ahead and jump into some of the questions. So Kyle, do we have anything to get into right here? Do we have questions queued up yes, here? Yes, we have quite a few questions. I will start firing them off. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask them in the order to receive them. So for those of you who asked them towards the beginning, we should get to yours quicker. So the very first one, Brandon, is can you, and this is when you were talking about the 1004 MC and you were um, showing marketing time, can you show us exposure time different than marketing time? Got it, so that's a good question. So exposure time, um, that would involve uh, future data. So right now, Spark will show you your marketing time and um, exposure time is more about like forecasting. So it's from your uh, effective date going forward. And so that's something for you with the, your experience and your knowledge to kind of figure out. And so here, actually, let's just go in and look at, uh, let's find this particular situation right here. So um, right here, what you could do is uh, go in and there's no specific exposure time 
uh, field because that's kind of a future looking thing, but you can use your knowledge and expertise to kind of sort it out. So what I'd say is you can go in and when if you see that it looks like exposure time might be changing uh, based on, for example, housing supply skyrocketing, active listing skyrocketing, then you would look at your days on market both for your sales and your listings. And so let's just look at it real quick and you can see what those are doing. They actually don't look too bad in this case. So it looks like things haven't quite yet turned, at least when it comes to marketing times. Um, and so those are actually decent. And if we go and look at days on market, uh, those are actually decent too, other than uh, actually the most recent one was was kind of high. Um, but in, in this kind of scenario, what you would do is just look at your days on market, see if things are headed in a direction. So in this case, it's really hard to tell with that data because there were so few sales. So that's a time where I would I would say you should go in and maybe load in a larger set of data like you can do in Spark. And what you wanna look at is if your days on market are increasing both for your sales and your listings, then that's, that's the sign that you might need to have a different exposure time. And then if that's the case, you need to kind of just decide based on your own knowledge, like, okay, this is where days on market was, this is looks like where it's heading. And then just note that in your report. Anything else? Yep, we got quite a few more. So, see, the next one is more of a comment. I think it was when you were looking at Phoenix data in the tenant form. See, so might have been California data. Someone just uh, had a question about the numbers looking high on page one and also on page two. If you could bring got that it. Back. Okay, let's go check it out. So, I think this is the this is the Phoenix data right here, and let's check it out. So, numbers at the top of page two looking high. Um, so no, it wasn't the Phoenix data. This all looks normal. Let's look at the Dallas data. So these numbers are high, but that is because this appraiser was using competing properties that are higher end homes, I'm assuming, or it was a really nice subdivision maybe. Um, but that looks normal to me. Um, you just, these are just higher end homes. You can see their median price was over a million dollars. And just in case you were referring to the last set of data, let's go check that out. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's I, I think you might have been talking about this. So um, hopefully this is what you're referring to. Yeah. So regarding your one unit housing prices, 675 to 4 million. So what Fannie Mae wants here and not all appraisers do it this way, but it is what Fannie Mae is looking for is they want to know what are the low, high and predominant prices of all of the in this case condos in that def, in your defined neighborhood boundaries so they're not necessarily asked they're not asking for just your competing properties now if your competing properties happen to be all the properties then yes they would be the same but that's the only instance so in this case there should there oftentimes will be a big uh, range here from 675 to 4 million and now what you might have been referring to is the top of page well it's a condo so in this case it's the top of page three numbers and it went from 1.2 million to 2.4 million and then the uh, sales were from 745 to 2.85 and, and that's a good point so maybe it's possible that this appraiser should have uh, narrowed down the data uh, maybe this data is too broad are, are these really competing properties does a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar home really compete with a 2.9 million dollar home uh, I don't know I, I, I don't know that area I'm not an appraiser in Beverly Hills uh, so I don't know if this is inaccurate but this is the data that the appraiser loaded in okay what else do we got, Kyle? Um, real quick, Brandon, on the adjust, I'm sorry, the exposure time versus marketing time, you got two comments on that. I just want to make sure it's clear. One person said, I believe you have exposure and marketing time flipped. Exposure occurs prior to the effective date and marketing time after. And then somebody else wrote, um, not in response to that, but just in the general discussion, no, exposure time was for the past, not the future. Marketing time is an estimate for the time in the future. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's awesome. You guys are absolutely right. I'm so sorry. I did flip them. Uh, that's really funny. I remember in class specifically, uh, the, our instructor uh, back when I was a newbie saying, just remember, because it's in alphabetical order, E is first, marketing time M is second. So yeah, I appreciate you guys pointing that out That uh, or, or ladies pointing that out. I, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Exposure time is prior. Marketing time is after. Thank you. All right. What else we got, Kyle? So Brandon, when you were showing the Channel 4MC data for the California sample set. 
somebody wrote, so it seems that the market switches to buying a different caliber or quality of home, which can look like a rise or fall in the median sales values. Uh, yes, um, it is possible that the that buyers are moving towards purchasing different types of homes. So, for example, with uh, that happens oftentimes in pr when you're looking at GLA. So the market can be moving. In fact, I think I have an example of it right here. Um, let's check it out. So this is the Dallas data, and if I remember right, I am just going to um, run this analysis using so this is the same analysis um, but instead of using price per square foot I'm going to use median price and check it out so here um, this is just a good example I think of what uh, that appraiser was saying I, I'm not sure I, I, I know exactly what they were getting at but in this case median price looks like it's skyrocketing you can see the red dots are the median price it's going up like crazy but price per square foot looks virtually dead stable and that's because buyers are moving towards buying uh, larger homes. So it's not necessarily that values were increasing. So that same house isn't going up in value. Uh, it's just that buyers are are moving towards uh, towards buying larger homes. And in this case, with price per square foot, it's, I'm sorry, with GLA, it's easy because you can just look at price per square foot and kind of normalize it. And by the way, I know a lot of you are um, on the East Coast and you don't have great GLA data, so price per square foot may not be an option for you, but a lot of appraisers, especially towards the west, co uh, the western side of the United States, do have better GLA data, so I would encourage you to at least try it out. Try out the G uh, price per square foot because it can help you, uh, in this case, better analyze the market, because you can see that's a big difference from two and a half percent increase a month, which you see in the red card there, versus only a half a percent a month uh, increase, which a lot of people would consider stable. Okay, so the next question we have, and we've got this quite a few times, so I think we should just answer this all at once. Does Spark work with ACI? So I think we should answer what form fillers it works for. And secondarily, can I use this standalone without a form filler? Yeah, that, thank you for that question. So right now, Spark works with, um, with click forms and it works with all all mode products and we are really close to being integrated with ACI. We've pretty much done everything on our end. We're just waiting on them to finish some things up so that should be very soon. Um, and did you say, was there one other thing about that, Kyle? Can I use Spark without a form filler? Nice, okay, yeah, so yes, you can. So, um, you will lose uh, some of the functionality. So as far as importing, comps uh, like your subject and your comparables into your report. Obviously, if we're not integrated with your form filler, you want to use it standalone, then it's not going to be able to do that. But all the rest of it, it, it still, you can absolutely use it for the market analysis. You can absolutely use it for the cost data and uh, site extraction tool. And the only difference is instead of automatically loading all of that data into your report, it's going to uh, just give you the work file information if that makes sense. So you'll get you'll get all the data, you get all the charts, you'll get all the comments, um, everything for cost data and market analysis, but it's just not going to uh, get you, it's just not gonna automatically load the data into your report. Brandon, earlier when you were showing exporting from Spark into Total, you were showing comments next to the charts. So someone's question is, how do we get that? How do we get the commentary next to the charts? Got it. So if you're using Spark, it's it's easy. Uh, I, I don't know if it, uh, maybe this appraiser happens to be a Spark user, so I'll just show you real quick. It's just a couple clicks. So you just hit export, and when you hit export, you switch from the large charts to the charts that are called medium with comments. And if you're not using Spark, then I would say just go find whatever form it is that you want to uh, use and and find the one that has a chart with a, a big empty box next to it and then just use that okay the next question we have brandon is when determining increasing or declining market time adjustments what would you recommend and or what works best yeah that's a really good question so let's uh i'll just go in and whoops sorry guys i just completely screwed that up <laughs> uh let me go and Fix that. And so I will get into that here in a second. I apologize for that little screw up here. And Kyle, can you just uh, tell me that question one more time? 
Yep, one second. When determining increasing or declining market time adjustments, what would you recommend and or what works best? Got it, thank you, sorry about that. Okay, so you need, uh, this is one where you need to, uh, it's kind of gonna vary by your market. So some appraisers just have a hard and fast rule like at 0.5% a month, that's when I'm gonna start making time adjustments. And, um, and other appraisers, they started at 1% a month or some just decide, okay, at 5% a year, that's when I'm gonna start making time adjustments. So that's something for you to kind of decide and what works best for your market. You can also use your sales grid to kind of decide that. So if you make time adjustments and it makes your comps adjust further away from each other, um, that's called sensitivity analysis. That would be an indication that you shouldn't be making that time adjustment. Uh, so you can you kind of use that as a guide as well. And then if your question was instead referring to um, what number to actually use, then here, let me uh, show you right here. And I don't know if we're running out of time, Kyle. It's 1101. Actually, we've we've uh, we've gone over, so I'll I'll show you this, and then we will um, we'll probably have to end it. But we will answer everybody's questions offline. So if you asked a question and we didn't answer it, we will email you a response with that, and we should be able to get to all those today. And um, so let's go ahead and let's see what are we doing? Oh yeah, here market analysis. So in this case. It says median sale price per square foot. It's going up at half a percent a month. Competing data is going um, for median sale price is going up at 2.4 percent a month. And then over two years, it looks like it's dead stable. So in this case, I would tend to place more weight on the on the uh, the price per square foot. Um, assuming you know, I mean, you're the expert in your market. Assuming you know what the market's actually doing, and then what I would say you should do is call it, uh, treat it like you treat your grid. So if you have comps ranging from 100,000 to 150,000, you're going to say your opinion of value is somewhere between 100 and 150. So when you run your analyses, let's say you're running four different analyses, and let's go to this. So this is how I do it. Uh, so you have your analyses and this is saying anywhere between 0.2 and 0.6% a month, that's the increase. So in this particular case, I would probably call this stable, but it depends on a little bit more. So I might dive in and look at it and say, okay, if I look at maybe just the past six months, let's see what happens. Okay, my competing properties are going up a bit more, but my neighborhood data is dead stable. And so you just have to decide based on your knowledge and expertise, like what's the best one to rely on and then either place more weight on it and maybe make a, in that case, a time adjustment of half a percent a month or just decide that no time adjustment is warranted and make it at zero. That's kind of a, it's, it's kind of like the question I think kind of boils down to you are the expert and it's just like your opinion of value. Like there's no, hard and fast rule about any of this. It's just like, and this is also kind of what sets us apart from AVMs, right? Like a computer is gonna be really hard to replace us reliably. Uh, like we saw in that one case of the appraiser in California, like if a computer had analyzed that data, they would have said the market was declining at 20 to 40% a month, but the appraiser knew in, in their gut that that's not what was happening. And so they dove in, they did a further deeper analysis and they realized, okay, it's stable. So no reason to adjust everything downward. So uh, I don't know if I answered your question in full, but hopefully it helped. Okay, the next question we have is, does it work with my MLS? And this particular question um, was about Bright MLS. Yes, we do work in Bright MLS. If you're curious if Spark works in your area, you can go to the link we posted there and you can see if it works in your area. Okay, the next question that we have is, how long does it take to get comfortable using Spark? Sorry about that, I was muted. So um, how, how long does it take to get comfortable with Spark? So for most appraisers, it ranges from three to four uses is where you really start to get comfortable with it. It depends on, um, what I would encourage you to do is 
is a, a lot of appraisers because because most of us are really busy um we just spark has built-in tutorials so it walks you through everything and most appraisers just don't want to do that they just like want to they skip the tutorials and they just they just want to dive in and muddle through it themselves and i find that those tend to be the people who get a little bit frustrated uh they or or they end up just calling us which is awesome i mean i encourage everybody to give us a call or shoot us an email if we can help out um but what I would say is take advantage of the tutorials and make sure you set aside a little bit of time. The first time you use it, of course, it's going to take longer to use than all the other times. Um, but by the third or fourth time, uh, you should be really comfortable with it. Okay. The next question is, you mentioned that Spark and import comps, can I customize how my sales grid will look? Yeah, absolutely. So the sales grid, yeah, um, you can, I, I don't have any comps loaded in. I don't want to waste time uh, doing it. But basically, when you have the grid up in Spark, you have full control over the way the data goes into your grid. If you don't like the default abbreviations for heating and cooling or patios or whatever it is, you can customize all of that. Um, and you can also customize the way the prior transfer history information goes into your report as well. Okay, next question is, my MLS often shows zero days on market for certain types of listings. Will Spark leave those as zero or calculate the real days on market? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, Spark will see when data looks strange or it's a zero or it's some crazy high number that probably isn't legitimate. Like I, I've seen some agents, um, maybe this doesn't apply to days on market, but they'll enter in just 9,999 for several fields because they just don't want to take the time to look up what it really is. So Spark will notice that strange data. And especially in the case of days on market, it will automatically calculate it using your listing date, sale date, pending date, or off market date, just depending on the status of the listing and what your settings are in Spark. Okay. I'm definitely going to sign up, but do you have someone there that can help me customize Spark? Yes, uh, definitely. We are here to help. So if the built in tutorials and the videos aren't cutting it for you, I, I hate to see appraisers wasting their time, like I said, muddling through things. So definitely give us a call and let us help. Also, uh, don't forget that Facebook group. Take advantage of that. Uh, so once you're a customer, you can join that Facebook group and we're going to post things in there to help you out. You can ask questions in there. A lot of times uh, we'll have appraisers that are using Spark at two in the morning. They just post a question in there and there's another appraiser that happens to be online and and working or something and they'll just answer it uh, for them. Okay, um, next one is, this seems cheap considering that it also includes cost data. Are there going to be any additional or hidden costs once I get started? No, definitely not. So um, the price you pay is what you pay. There are no add-on fees, additional costs, anything like that. It's it's forty nine dollars a month. That's the unlimited subscription. And, um, and, and like I said, you can also use the per report option if you'd like. Okay, thanks. Um, next one, how much time can I expect to save on each appraisal? Yeah, that's a great question actually. So we act, we just did a, a survey a month or two ago and the survey results from our customers, because we basically just asked them how, like, how much time is it saving you? Is it not saving you time, whatever? And, and basically the responses were anywhere on the very, very low end of 15 minutes to the very high end that I saw was two hours. Um, so it, I, I'd say it's probably going to vary significantly based on your current methods. Um, and another thing you can do is if, if you do try using Spark, you can contact us and I, I, we tried to make Spark so it works with various different workflows. So a lot of appraisers do things very differently, but we made it so it should work with all the different workflows. And so let us know, give us a call and let us see if we can help you save even more time over what you're already experiencing. Okay. Next one. How accurate is the data? Yeah, that, that's a great one. So uh, as far as the market analysis, it's as accurate as whatever is in your MLS, because uh, we take the MLS data, the uh, sale prices, the um, the dates of sale, all that stuff, um, and, and that's what we use to calculate. And as I alluded to earlier, like with appraisers on the East Coast, not necessarily the whole East Coast, but certain areas in the East Coast, you don't have good GLA data. You already know that though. So you're not probably gonna even try to use price per square foot. And then regarding the grid, what we do is we use MLS and public records data. So, and you have full control over how you combine that data and load it into your report. So if you, uh, for example, want lot size to go in always based on public records, but you want GLA to always go in based on 
uh, MLS data, then you can set that up yourself. So again, though, it is as accurate as the data from your public records and, and MLS. Okay, next one. I'm currently using a competitor. Can I try Spark out to, to compare it without paying? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm sure that question was probably asked before we covered it in the slide, but yes, we do have a free trial, so you can use Spark on 12 reports before paying. Okay, this next one's more of a comment, but I still think we should address it, Brandon, and that is things are a lot slower right now, so I'm having a hard time justifying adding costs to my business. Yeah, okay, so that's a good one. Um, as I mentioned, this, this uh, slow time should be considered an opportunity to improve your business. So I get that it's hard to justify spending money right now, but tools like this and these new skills are an opportunity. And they're also a benefit in helping to grow and diversify your business. So I think I would just think of it that way. And, and of course, you're gonna try it out and you're gonna use it on 12 reports for free. So you're gonna know if it's actually gonna be worth your time. So you don't necessarily need to justify it yet. Um, and, and when you do decide that you need to justify it, just think of this as your opportunity to grow. Okay, next. I'm considering switching over to Spark as I realize it will save me almost $500 a year from the current company I'm using. However, I'm a bit afraid of the growing pains of learning something new. Got it, yeah. So, uh, first of all, uh, yeah, a nearly $500 annual savings over what you're currently using is is huge. Um, so, I mean, that right there is, is good. Um, further, Spark is very easy to learn and you, it's uh, sorry. It's very easy to learn, and and you're going to be up and running in no time. And we're also here to help you every step of the way. Also, as appraisers, and, and I kind of we've alluded to it before. We need to start thinking about things differently because a $500 annual savings could actually be far more than that when you consider the opportunity cost of how you could use that $500 savings to uh, market your business and actually get more work out of it as well. Okay. Next one is, I currently use Appraiser Genie for my adjustments. Can I use Spark along with it? Let me think about that. Uh, you can, I have never used Appraiser Genie. Uh, I'm familiar with how it works. Um, yes, you could use Appraiser Genie for your adjustments. I think, well, you know what? I, I don't know if I should really answer this, but so take it with a grain of salt. You may need to contact them, but um, the all the market analysis and everything that goes into your report, Spark can load in. And as long as in Appraiser Genie, you can turn off the comp importing and you can turn off the market analysis and just use their adjustment support, then absolutely you can do it. I just don't know um, if if they allow you to do that. And And it also depends on what form filler you use. If you use a form filler like, uh, all motor click forms, then they allow you to um, they allow you to merge the data, which would mean you could load all the data in from Spark and then just go to Appraiser Genie, get the adjustments, and then load that in over top. And if you use the option to merge the data, it means it, Appraiser Genie will not be allowed to overwrite any of the Spark data. It'll only put in the adjustments. So yeah, you could use that option. Okay, the next question we have, we need to reframe a little bit. So I'm going to read it how it's written. When, it's when you were showing the export from Spark to Total. The new page export has all of the portions sent to the work file. Can the summary page go to the work file alone? Looks like currently it has to be imported and then multiple pages need to be deleted. Yes, um, as long as I'm understanding it correctly, yes, you do not have to load in that page into your report. You can just have it go into your work file. Let me look at that again. Uh, the new page export has all the portions sent to the work file. Can you? Can the summary page go to the work file alone? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, as long as I'm reading that right, then yes, you can absolutely do that. Okay, next one's more of a comment, but uh, I'll just read this one anyways. Spark has been a lifesaver for my business and not only saves me time, but allows me to easily stand out for my competitors. Thank you that, for that feedback. That's always great to hear. Yeah, thank you. Next one, this is, um, we might have to reframe this one also, Brandon. He, so this one says, is there an option with Spark data or mainly Trenchy, which I have not tried yet, to clean the raw data that we are inputting or analyzing? As we have a lot of inconsistent or lack of proper MLS input, such as GLA and below grade information. With my current regression option, I have to input GLA or correct it often. But with the incorporation of the CoreLogic, CoreLogic data, it will be extremely helpful. Okay, so yes, you can 
clean it and filter it. Um, I I don't want to misrepresent it. So essentially, uh, here, let me just see if I can show you uh, what I'm talking about in case it's not exactly what you're talking about. So first, in the grid, you can load in your data. And like I said, you can tell it whether you want GLA to come from MLS or public records. So it sounds like you would use public records. Um, and then when you're talking about the market data, then what you can do, and here, let me just show you. Let's just go in here and let's say, um, let's just say one of these dots was really high. Like it was at $500,000 where everything else is selling it. I'm sorry. $500 a square foot where everything else is as high as 180. What you could do is you can click on it and then Spark is gonna show you all those data points, but then it's also gonna highlight the one that you clicked on. And then you can go in and say, okay, what's what's going on with this data? And so you, you're able to go through, you can sort, you can filter, um, and, and so you can go through your data and just say, okay, I wanna see all the sale prices. I wanna sort them high to low. And hey, look, that one looks like it's too high. Maybe it's an anomaly. Maybe it's something I shouldn't have included. I shouldn't have included, or maybe it's just a typo. And then you can go and find the correct data. And maybe this actually sold for 449 and you just go like this. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> you can't see what I'm doing. Uh, you can just type in the number and then you hit go back and Spark recalculates everything and that means uh, every single chart, every single analysis point, all of that is all customized on the fly. And then you can also, you don't have to do that within the charts. You can just do that right at the beginning when you're looking at Spark. So I can click on modify data and this magnifying glass means I can go in, look at the individual data points, do all the stuff I just talked about, sorting, filtering. I can, you know, remove REOs. And in fact, if you see a, if you have an REO floating around and you know, it's not actually an REO, I, I doubt that's ever going to happen, but you can just click it and say, you know what, that's an arm's length transaction and swap it over. And then again, when you hit go back, everything is automatically updated and calculated on the fly. Okay, our next question is actually a comment. This one says, I was afraid to switch from Data Master to Spark because of how convoluted Data Master is, but turns out Spark is way easier to use. Once again, thanks for the great feedback. That's always great to hear. Yeah, thank you. Um, next one says, maybe because I've been using Spark for a while, I haven't experienced the slowdown. I've actually gotten busier this year versus last year. I appreciate you giving Spark credit, but I'm sure that has more to do with how great of an appraiser you are. Hey, that person also wrote, I did want to see how to use Spark for doing the MC as I've been using Titan Analytics. I just use Spark for importing comps. Okay, great. So hopefully you got a lot out of this webinar. And yeah, absolutely. Feel free to check that out. Um, hopefully that will end up saving you some money as well. Yeah, and one thing I'd say uh, is, is a big advantage with Spark uh, is that the ability to analyze multiple sets of data, I did touch on it a little bit already, uh, or actually a lot, but but um, finding a tool that lets you use more than one set of data is, is pretty crucial. And what some appraisers do is they'll load in um, five years worth of data. So they only have five sales in a year. So they go ahead and pull in five years worth. And that's great and it's helpful, but it's still, if you have a change in your market that just took place over the past six to 12 months, that five years worth of data with only a few data points every year is really not gonna be helpful. And that's where having a, some second set of data can be extremely helpful. Okay, next one. Does this tool give you adjustments for property specifics such as pools, garages, baths, square footage, et cetera? <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so no, Spark right now does not provide any kind of support for adjustments. Um, it um, Well, it will help you obviously with your time adjustments or what some appraisers are gonna call market condition adjustments, but it does not help with any of those other adjustments. We are actually in the process of building that tool right now, uh, but it is many months away. Uh, but yeah, it, it, so Spark does not do that. The, that other product I, I mentioned at the very beginning the, I, that I created several months or several years ago, uh, Trendsheet, that does help with uh, adjustments. So you could always check that out. Okay, next is just a comment. Love Spark and how much info you can look at in a very short amount of time. It's great to have that feedback. Thank you again. Um, next question. What threshold of monthly percent change do you like for deciding a market is remaining stable, plus or minus? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. And that is one that we already kind of answered. Uh, I'm sure you asked that before we answered it, but um, I kind of use right around the 0.5%, but but honestly, that's that's what works well in my area. And I, I wouldn't say that everybody should use that. You use whatever you think is best. In fact, I know another appraiser in my area who uses 1% a month. 
Um, but the thing that I think is key is what I said earlier that if you are if you're unsure, then maybe make the adjustment. And then if your if your adjusted values are thrown way off, then maybe get rid of it because that would tell you if your adjusted values are thrown off by the time adjustment that you shouldn't be making it. So then you can get rid of it. Okay, next question. How many properties can be loaded at one time? Okay, so on the, the grid, the comps, you can load 30 at once. And for the MC side, for the, the each data set, we allow 10,000 properties. So that's 10,000 into your competing data set, 10,000 to neighborhood, et cetera, et cetera. I'd also just point out right there that um, if you, for the site extraction tool, we allow you to use 12 comps for site extraction. That is the limit we have there. Okay, next. When are you going to produce your own forms? <laughs> uh, we we have had appraisers uh, ask us that. Um, we are probably not going to be producing our own forms. Uh, so yeah, sorry about that. Okay, next. I have been paying 49 a month for Spark, but my volume has dropped to about five reports a month. How can I change over to per report because it appears it will save me money? Yeah, definitely. I would highly encourage you to switch over. So um, it depends uh, because if you're using click forms, you just right inside a Spark, you click the gear icon and you click payment account status. And right there, it allows you to do it. Um, so you can just cancel your subscription and then use the option where you can just pay uh, $3 a report. Now, if you're using a la mode products, then, and by the way, that will also apply to ACI once once we're fully on board with them. And and for a la mode though, they do control the pricing and usage of Spark. So what you wanna do is call a la mode, let them know you wanna turn off the auto renew on your script subscription, and then, and then also let them know that you wanna start paying for Spark uh, per report. And so if you go to that, that all mode total store then it will have a spark page right in there and and if you call all mode to to cancel the monthly subscription which by the way you do have to do you they don't have a way to do it right on their website um so you call them up you cancel it and you just let them know that you want to pay and they will help you it's uh 47 dollars for 16 reports which works out to a little under three dollars a report and if you only want to buy four reports then it works then it's uh 14 dollars which works out to about 350 a report Okay, the next question, Brandon, is what's the process that happens once I sign up for the free trial? Yeah, could, another good question. So um, the free trial, you you go and you click that get started button, the link you should hopefully see on your screen there. Uh, you click that, you go and click the get started button, it walks you through the process. And then essentially what happens is it depends on if you're using all mode or click forms, because if you're using all mode, it's gonna, it's gonna at some point say, okay, click here and go get the free trial. If you're using click forms uh, or in the future ACI, it'll be automatic. You'll just automatically get it. You don't have to do that step. Um, so then you get the free trial and it's all just built into the process. And then once you have the free trial, you just go right back to the Spark window. So don't close it. And then Spark will walk you through the rest of the process. So, and like I said, it has a built-in tutorial. So you're, it's gonna say, okay, now click here to do this and now click here to do that. And the one other step you might have to do as a setup, and it just depends on your, which MLS you're in, is you might have a custom setup to do in your MLS and Spark will, tell you when you get to that point how to do it there is a big yellow button that says click here for the setup instructions and it's step by step for walking right through your mls and how to do it in your mls if you have any issues at all though feel free to contact us anytime and we'll help you out with that setup and i mean and we can even do it for you if you want okay next questions how do you get the calculations page to import Okay, so if you want you, uh, well, the calculations page automatically goes into your work file, but if you want it to go into your actual report, uh, then let me just show you real quick. So first, when you hit export, so you can see there is include work file report. So if you have that turned off, then it would not go into your report, but um, it, that's always turned on by default. So unless you unchecked it, then you will get that calculations page in your uh, work file. And if you're using uh, all a mode, what you would do is, let me just show you here. You can actually just click on it and click insert as page. 
and then you can insert that document as a page at the bottom of your report. Um, and in click forms, you would basically um, put that, uh, create that, uh, that page in your report, and then you can import that PDF into that page. And that PDF will be in your work file uh, document that you get. Okay, next question. Oh, this one's actually more of a comment. Just signed up for the free trial, looking forward to it. Great, thanks, if you need any help, you know how to contact us now. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, let us know if you need anything. Next question. Does this allow me to do regression analysis for adjustments? So it does use regression, but it only does helps you with time adjustments right now. So the other adjustments are things that we're going to be adding uh, in our future tool that we're building right now. And yes, it will include regression when we release that. Okay, next. Why do you think that 0.5% per month increase is a stable market when that's 6% a year? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I guess um, every, I'm assuming you think that 6% is a lot. Um, I do believe that actually Fannie Mae's definition is either five or six percent. If you uh, if you check it out, theirs is either five or six percent. Um, and and the reason is just mostly because of fluctuations, seasonality. Um, so that 0.5 percent, it just you know there's a lot of things going into that. And I would also say that if if you don't want to use 0.5 percent, you probably need to use something. Um, so you if if you use maybe 0.2 percent. Um, then that obviously means there is an increase in the market. It's just a smaller one. But so somewhere you got to have a cutoff. Um, there's virtually no market where you're ever going to see it's ex exactly 0.000% increase. So just decide where you think your cutoff should be. Um, and, and I'm pretty, and I'm pretty confident that Fannie's is either five or 6% in, in when they decide a market is increasing or declining. And, and the other note on that is again, it, it's really, it, it's really defined by your grid. So if you think that um, a 0.3% adjustment is the cutoff and you make the 0.4% per month adjustment and your grid works out nice and your comps all get closer to each other, then by all means do it. And I would do it too. Um, I, I'm not saying it's a hard and fast rule. I don't like, it's not an automatic 0.5% or higher, or otherwise I'm not even gonna look at it. it. But if my grid isn't looking right and I don't have the time adjustment in there and it's, I think it's 0 0.4, I'll just go ahead and make it if it's gonna make my comps line up better because that means it's warranted. Okay, next question. Can you include the Tunnel 4MC as well as the new market analysis? So right now, we don't have a way in one shot to include the market analysis, uh, the new trend dashboard screen, and the 1004MC. However, there is an easy workaround. You hit the export button, you load the data into your report, then back in Spark, you just click that toggle button, switch over to the other one, like let's say the 1004MC, and then hit export again, and it will load that uh, form right into your report. Okay, next, does Spark do a major market analysis? For example, if I wanted to look at a portion of a county to see what the market is doing, like 3,500 properties. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, the data set that I am using in that Phoenix data, the competing property data set was 1,000 and the neighborhood property was uh, 3,400. And Spark does allow you to have up to 10,000 properties per data set. So you could have 10,000 for competing, 10,000 for neighborhood, and 10,000 for your alternative data. Next question. What feature time adjustments are you going to include in your upcoming adjustment tool? What feature time adjustments? Um, I'm assuming you didn't mean to put the word time in there, but I'm not sure. Uh, so uh, right now, what we're planning on including in the future adjustment tool is, and this list is fluctuating and it's, I'm not gonna say everything because <laughs> I just wanna make sure we're able to do everything before we say it, but we are gonna, going to include uh, s various forms of regression. Um, we're gonna have both simple regression and multiple regression and various forms of uh, iterations on regression. We're also going to have a paired sales analysis and we're going to have grouped data where you can compare. Uh, it's like group, a lot of appraisers will call it grouped matched pairs or aggregate differences. We're going to include that so you can compare one group of properties against another to get a potential adjustment. And we're also going to include depreciated cost. 
It's actually the whole reason we initially got cost data a year ago was so that we could use it on this tool that we're building right now. Uh, so we are going to use we're going to have a depreciated cost method in there. And let me see uh, allocation. I think we're going to have sensitivity and allocation, and we're going to have some type of modeling that you can do. And we haven't exactly sorted that out, so I don't want to talk too much about it. But uh, and then we also have two or three other methods. That, um, that we're gonna kind of hold in our back pocket and, and just mention next year when we release it. Okay, next question. Are there any current plans to add two to four unit properties to Spark? I complete a lot of GP two to four property appraisals. I'd love to have Spark for those appraisals. Uh, yeah, actually we added two to four support, uh, income property support last year. So if you're using Spark and you're not using it with your 1025 or your multifamily GP form, then give us a call and we'll help show you how to do that. Um, if I think what might be happening is you might be in an area where we, what we did was um, we spark initially, it did, it worked for uh, condos and SFRs. And then last year we added multifamily. And when we added it, we found that some areas don't provide all the data we need in, in the multifamily export in, in order to get accurate information for each individual unit. So for example, you're probably an area where the MLS won't give us, uh, for example, the GLA and the bedroom and bath count of the individual units in the property. And so instead of, we didn't want to claim full support there because that we felt that would be a little disingenuous, but we do have a workaround for you. So um, you can actually, when you're in Spark and you're on the page where you're about to upload your comps, click that yellow button that says need help with file setup, click here, and you're gonna be taken to a page with the instructions for your MLS. And if you scroll down to the very bottom, it'll give you the instructions on how to get the multifamily data loaded accurately into your report. The only thing you're gonna be missing is the individual unit information, but everything else will load in just fine. So check that out. It's at the bottom of that page for that workaround or just give us a call. Okay, next question. I have been a user of Trendsheet and Spark for some time. Is the data that is now represented in Spark the same as the data generated in Trendsheet? Um, I, I can't say that it's the same. Uh, Spark is much more robust than Trendsheet is. So uh, we do a lot more error checking uh, things. So Trendsheet was originally made, I, I was an all mode user uh, and, and I built it for myself. So I just used the worksheet tab in total. And um, so it was designed for that. And the the spreadsheet that Alamode licensed for that, it has some limitations. So there's certain things we can't do. The data, I, I guess that's this is a long-winded way of answering it. So let me just say the data should be identical or almost identical. Um, only difference is being if there's something weird going on with certain listings, Spark may be able to account for that and Trendsheet might not be able to. Okay. Next, are there any R squared measures displayed for the regression results so the user can understand the variability of the data? Yeah, so that's something we're considering adding. Honestly, we we purposefully did not include it. Um, and my thought on that was, um, actually, I, I think we might now have it in the in the work file. Kyle, do you happen to remember? Um, I'm not sure if we put it in the work file or not right now. I, I have a feeling we don't. but we purposefully excluded it because R squared is not a great way to measure. Uh, a lot of times appraisers are gonna rely on R squared to see how reliable the number is because of variability. And yes, it does measure variability, but that's not really a great thing to measure when it comes to real estate or actually anything in the social sciences. Um, my background, which I didn't talk about in the bio is, uh, my degrees are in uh, psychology and statistics. and and the social sciences is where, and, and real estate falls along with that because we're talking about human emotion and, and all that when people are making their buying decisions. So you can get a lot of variability in data, but that doesn't mean the results are not good. And so I felt like it might be misleading to include that. Um, but we actually were talking about that a couple of weeks ago. And so it's something we are including just for those of you who, who really care about it, but just be aware um, that R squared isn't really great for real estate, um, running regression on real estate. Um, there's other there's other things that will, will help more. Uh, so anyways, that's the answer. Okay, next question. Is there a way to edit the site data sources for above information default comments on the 1004MC? 
right now there is that is our only comment that is not customizable. I believe all it does is it use a, uses a canned comment and then it puts in whatever MLS you're in and whatever effective date you chose. So uh, the answer is no on that one. That is one of the few fields, it's the only one I can think of right now where it is not customizable. Okay, next question. Does the Excel sheet with the data save into your work file? No, that Excel sheet is something that you um, that you have on your computer. So that would be something that you would want to drag over to your digital work file. And appraisers handle that in all different ways. So that that uh, in most MLSs, it's a CSV file. Uh, it might be TSV or TXT for you, depending on your MLS. But most appraisers, they'll download that file and then they just go and put that e into their whatever folder they're using as their digital work file. Or if you're using all mode, just throw it right into your work file tab in all mode. Next question. Can the Spark sales grid be printed to a PDF if you're not importing into a form filler? Hmm. Um, I've never been asked that. I've never tried that. I'm, I'm pretty, the only thing I would say you could do is, I, I don't know for sure if you could print that. I don't think you can, but I do know of an appraiser who takes a screenshot of it so you could do that, um, you, which would be similar to a PDF. Uh, uh, so yeah, that's what I would say is you could use uh, either the, the built-in free Windows snipping tool or you could use um, uh, something like Snagit and just take a screenshot of it and then include that in your work file. Okay, love Spark, the charts are great, thank you. Can the charts be numbered prior to being exported? So yes, you, you um, I mean, not numbered literally, meaning we won't actually put a number in front of them, although you have control over the title of the chart, so you can make the title whatever you want and include a number if you wanted. But I think what you're saying is, can you change the order? And in the 1004MC, they go in a specific order guided by Fannie Mae. Um, so, so it puts all the charts regarding sale price first, and then uh, I believe it's housing supply and then marketing time and then so on through the rest of the features in the MC. Um, but within the sale price charts, you can order those. And so all you do in those cases is you click the chart and you drag it around on the screen. So if you remember that screen we were looking at, you can just drag the chart around on the screen and, and put it in the order that you want. Now, I will say on the new trend dashboard that we just built, you have full control over the order. So you can just drag, so if you want price ratio chart to go in first, you just drag price ratio up to the top. And yeah, so you have full control when it comes to that. But when it comes to the 1004MC, we do have a, a few limitations. Okay. Next, for areas not covered by Spark, is that because each coverage area is created to work specifically with the MLS's export function? Well, that's part of it. Uh, so if, if that was all there was to it, we could be working in a lot more MLS's right now. So with Spark, we don't just map fields. Um, if we did just map fields, we don't believe that the we believe the market analysis could be just as accurate. But the grid, what we load into your grid, uh, would be much less accurate. So we actually do a really uh, deep and thorough translation of the data in the MLS. And sometimes it means combining fields or combining only certain features of fields. Maybe we'll take one thing from interior features, put it in another thing. And, and so there's a lot going on and we actually interview appraisers in each market as we get on board with that market to make sure we're doing things the best way for appraisers in that area. So that's why it takes us so long. Um, if um, if we were just mapping fields though, we hope we'd probably have a lot more of these MLSs done. But so it basically it, it results in, uh, some of you have to wait a lot longer for Spark to work in your area, but for those that it does work for, it works much better. Okay, next. Brandon, when forming a conclusion on trends, are you finding that clients are looking for your conclusion based over the past 12 month period, based on simple regression, or maybe the past three to six months? My markets are always fluctuating, thanks. Got it, yeah, that's a good one. So um, what I would say is, uh, I don't know that clients are gonna be looking for one thing in particular. I know um, I was actually at one of the appraisal conferences last month, or maybe it was two months ago, and and there were several heads of AMCs talking about how they like two years worth of data. Um, but but really, I would say, as long as you have support for what you're doing, you do whatever you think is best. So if you think 
a six month analysis is best. And in fact, I think I used it as an example here because uh, somebody asked a question about it. So the 12 month might look a certain way, but if you look at just the past six months, you can see that uh, the data is doing something very different. Um, so yeah, use that if you think it's best, but just be careful because seasonality, um, cyclical things, those can also impact that and make things look like they're starting to go down when really it's just a temporary thing. So I think using a combination of two year, one year and six months would be would be great. Okay, next. Can you join the Facebook group if you're interested in Spark, but it doesn't work in your area? So, no, unfortunately, we, that is just for our Spark customers. We do have a Facebook page that for you, though. So it's um, maybe Kyle can go grab the link and post it there. But it's uh, we have a Spark for appraisers page on Facebook that you can go in. You can see reviews from people on Facebook, um, see what we've posted recently. Um, but no, we we don't allow you to have access to um, to the support group, to the user support group, since you're not a user yet, unfortunately. Okay, give me one second. I'm going to post that in here. Okay, I just put that in the chat. Okay, next question. Working with assistants, is the price per office or staff number? <laughs> uh, that is a good and complicated one. I'll try not to take too much time with it. Um, uh, Spark's terms and conditions are that you pay per appraiser who's having data loaded into their reports. So if you have 15 appraisers in your office and you have four assistants, you would have to pay for the 15 appraisers. You do not have to pay for the four assistants. Um, if, uh, so that's the way it works. We don't, we don't, our goal was never to charge for assistants, trainees, admin, per, uh, admin people. It, we just wanted to charge per appraiser who is signing a report that's having data loaded in. Um, now there are, there is unfortunately an exception. So, uh, and it only applies to all a mode. Um, but with all a mode, if they have made it so you have multiple customer numbers in your office, then even if it's a support staff or a trainee, which we don't want to charge for, um, all a mode requires a payment for that person if they have a different all a mode customer number. So hopefully that helps. Okay, next. You mentioned the development of an adjustment support tool while I'm using Trendsheet Lite as an add-on. Is there an ETA on the development of the adjustment support tool? Is there a sneak peek or list of things to expect from it? Will there be an additional charge for this feature? Thanks. I would love to see a sneak peek of it myself. Uh, it's uh, it, it's not close to being done. Um, I don't know how far away we are from having people try it out, like in a beta version, but we aren't at a point yet where we're ready to release anything. Um, and this is a much more thorough and re robust tool than what you're used to with, with Trendsheet. Um, the, this tool is its own tool though. So it's not, um, it's not part of Spark. It will be its own tool. So you will have to pay for it. I, at this point, we don't know what we're going to charge for it. So I can't really answer that, but other than to say, yes, there will be a charge. Okay. Next one's just a comment. I'm in looking forward to giving it a try. Great. Thank you. Um, next question. Is it in the works to have a way for Spark to import data into Trend? So is there a way to have Spark import data into Trendsheet? No, there isn't a way that we can do that. Um, no, uh, the answer is I because of the limitations in that worksheet tab in all mode, I don't have a way to do that, unfortunately. Okay, we are getting close to about two hours, so we're gonna answer questions for another 10 minutes. I think we'll probably be able to get through them, but just in case we don't, I do wanna remind you how you can sign up. The link there is on the page and also in the chat. You can go to sparkforappraisers.com slash trial. That's how you can sign up. And also, if you have more questions, our contact info is on the page also. Okay, next question. And it, Brandon, I think you kind of just answered this, but it's phrased differently, so there might be more context here. The, Price per month, which is $49, is it per user or per company? Right, so that is per appraiser. So if your company has five people, two of them are appraisers, and both of those appraisers are going to be using Spark in one way or another, then you would pay for two people, not all five. Okay, regarding the a la mode total store, what is the difference between Spark and Spark Lite? Okay, yeah, so Spark Lite is a tool we made for appraisers where Spark doesn't yet work. 
I will say that it is very limited in functionality. So at this point, uh, Spark, it, since it is designed for areas where the full version, since Spark Lite is designed for areas where the full version of Spark does not work, it does not have access to any MLS data. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to be able to populate your grid using public records data and give you the, that work file data, but there's no market analysis because it has no access to MLS data. There's, there's nothing else to it. It's just loading data in from your grid using public records. And that's primarily beneficial for appraisers who are in outlying areas or areas where it's not easy to get access to public records. So they can go into that tool and have really quick and easy access to online records. And, and by the way, that applies even to uh, areas where you can't get the online records yourself, even through your own county. A lot of times we do have it online. Uh, so anyways, that might be worth checking out too if you are not in an area supported by the full version of Spark. Okay, the next question. Where are you getting all the data that you're using there? Are you exporting all of the sales data from MLS for a neighborhood? Because I see you going from one year to two years, et cetera. Yeah, okay, so what I did, so in the, in the two, in the two, uh, in the example I did where I used data from the appraiser in Dallas and then the one from the appraiser in California, I just used the data they sent me. So whatever data you export from your MLS, that's what Spark will have access to. Obviously, if you upload two years worth of data and you try and do a 10 year analysis, you're, it, it's, Spark will let you know this is not gonna be accurate because you didn't upload enough information. It'll be able to tell you that. So it's just a matter of you uploading the information. And and by the way, that is why my, um, in the Phoenix, um, example that I gave, which was which was my data, I actually did a 10 year search. So I could go in there and just swap it over and say analyze five years or eight years or 10 years or whatever. And it would just do it on the fly because I uploaded all that data to Spark. Okay, next, this one is a comment also. So excited to get started is I can already see how this will help me market to attorneys. Thanks for the great info today. Yeah, you're welcome. I hope you learned something. That's absolutely why we ran this webinar in the first place to hopefully help serve appraisers. Um, the next one, this is a question. You mentioned you'll be doing other things to help us build our business. What does that look like? Yeah, so what that looks like is things like this. So we're going to be posting information uh, regarding how we'll just post snippets. And I'm not, say, I'm not saying it's going to be like every day or anything, but we're going to post information regarding how you can improve your workflow. Or maybe if you're not using templates, try this out. And then when you try out templates, you make sure you do this in Spark to, to make sure that the data goes in correctly. Um, and then give examples of templates. Also, videos. Um, I, we make a, a lot of videos to help appraisers with their process and not all of them are necessarily geared they're not really geared towards spark they're mostly geared towards um, helping you analyze your market or helping you understand the cost data and and what it means and how to use it better so it would be things like that and then also um, things like maybe helping with providing something like a a, a template um, cover page to send off to uh, when you're applying for a panel that kind of stuff is the is the kind of stuff we're looking at including Okay, next one. This is a comment and a question from the same person. Amazing work, guys. So looking forward to your adjustment tool that's in the works. Thank you for the innovation. One more question, though. I do a lot of 5 to 12 unit apartments on 71B forms. Any possibility in getting Spark to function with the few of us that actually do this type of work? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say it's not possible, but it is a ways away from working. So with um, when we added multifamily last year, it took us about three months where we had to stop everything and not add any other features to Spark, not work on the adjustment tool, not work on adding cost data, which we didn't have at the time, just to get um, multifamily in there. Because basically what we had to do was we had to go into every single MLS and redo that entire deep translation because multifamily data looks different. And so we would have to do the same thing in this case, completely redo that entire translation. So that would be a ways off. That, that right now wouldn't be highest up on our priority list. Unfortunately, really sorry about that. Okay, next one, just a comment. All signed up and should be through my first 12 reports by this time next week. That's great to hear. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy Spark and you get some value out of it. Uh, next comment, love the idea of using this to help brand myself and setting myself apart from my competitors. Absolutely, yeah, like Brandon said throughout the webinar, that is hopefully exactly what Spark can help you with. 
Um, that covers all the comments. I do see that a number of you have already signed up for Spark to try it out. I just want to let you know we really appreciate that. I hope you enjoy Spark. Like we said before, if there's any questions or any concerns that you have, you know where to find us now. You have the website. You have the Facebook group. Um, please feel free to reach out. We are happy to help you. Um, and lastly, I just want to reiterate our about our private Facebook group. We're looking forward to get you getting to know you in there. And the more that we can help you out through the Facebook group or through phone calls, the, the happier it will be with Spark. So again, feel free to reach out. Thank you again.